Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yes, good morning. It's such a joy to have each one of you here this morning to be here, be with us, and to be with one another. It's just a joy indeed. Is there anyone here for the first time today? No, I think not. I think we've all been here before. We know the routine. Uh, our uh, uh, life together is, is an amazing experience. And this Easter celebration is going to be one that's quite different, I think, from what we've had before, yet in some ways the same. Uh, I, uh, I know that each one of us here has brought a life and a love and a joy and an energy in our hearts. And it's just such a wonder to be part of that. It truly, truly is. Let's see now. There really aren't too much in the way of announcements here. Uh, the only thing I would add to what's on the list there is that next Sunday, we're going to have the opportunity to uh, view the videos from the conference, uh, the CSL conference. And they'll be in, probably in the library like last time. And we had four people that view them last time. Maybe we'll get four or eight more. We'll just see. OK. Well, let's now go into this wonderful feeling of being completely alive and renewed and energized as we sing our morning song. The morning has broken. It's there in your program. You have the instrument for it. Please sing with me. Morning has broken. Practitioner Cheryl Guest to pray us in. So, in this silence, in this beauty, this awakening, this newness, the new thoughts, the new day, just allowing everything that has gone in the past to just flow away to fall away, and to allow us to open up our hearts and our spirits to this renewal, to the freshness, to this immersion in the love and the peace and the joy that is spirit. And I know that each of us are connected to this beautiful, powerful source, 
And as this day unfolds, just allow our hearts to flow into that love, into that peace, and knowing that this is also a time of forgiveness and letting go of old thoughts, old resentments, old limitations. It's a time to just rebirth our spirits and allow them to just shine forth and be the natural spiritual beings that we are in every moment of our lives. And so with so much gratitude in my heart, I just release into this powerful, powerful love all the goodness and all of the joy that is within me that is naturally within each and every one of us. And so I just release this to the law, knowing that this is unfolding today in perfect divine right order, and each person present is here by divine urge, knowing that something new is, going, is arising within them, something new is unfolding. And so please join me now in saying, and, and so, so it is. is. Our affirmation for today is, today I shed old thoughts and beliefs of limitation and I lovingly embrace all the freshness of this new awareness of myself. I am a unique expression of the infinitely divine flow of love and creativity. And so it is. It's nice to have the whole band here. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Oh, gracious me. Uh, let's see, at this point, typically we'd love to have an inspirational reading. I believe Susie Onstas already here. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Rachel Carson has written, there is something infinitely healing in the repeated refrains of nature, the assurance that dawn comes after night and spring after the winter. Ernest Holmes in The Science of Mind on page 413, the resurrection is the death of the belief that we are separated from God, for death is to the illusion alone and not to reality. Today is the day Christians celebrate Easter, the holiday honoring Jesus' res resurrection and the hope of eternal life. Easter likely has its origin in pagan springtime rituals and represents the renewal of life the season brings. After a winter of dormancy, life returns in spring. Flowers bloom, trees leaf out, Animals come out of hibernation. Birds ramp up their singing. Life quickens again, part of the natural cycle of the world. So too, humans have cycles. Sometimes we are productive and active. Other times we are dormant, hibernating, quiet. It is natural to feel differently at different times in a year or in life. Cycles of activity and rest appear throughout the natural world, and these cycles are necessary to our growth. One way to think of this is like snakes shedding their skin. Snakes' bodies continue to grow, but their skin does not, so they must shed their old skin to stay alive. We can think of Easter this way. It's a time to shed or let die off that which is old, so we have room to grow and welcome in the new. The affirmation that attends this, today I shed my old thoughts and beliefs and I revel in the newness of life. I am. 
him down and oh my soul so weary when troubles come and my heart burdened me then I am still without its hunger each restless heart beats so imperfectly but when you come and I am filled with wonder sometimes I think I can glimpse eternity you raise me stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on stormy seas and I am strong when I am on your shoulders you raise me up to more than I can be stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on stormy seas I am strong but I am on your shoulders you raise me up to more than I can be you raise me Thank you for that inspirational song. Welcome to our Easter celebration. What we're talking about raising up here, we're talking about raising up our consciousness. We're talking about raising up our sense of life. We're talking about being fully and completely present in this moment. We're talking about love and power and joy and energy, and it's all wonderful. It's amazing the power that exists in this teaching we call science of mind and how we're able to capitalize on that and draw on that. You see, Easter is all about life. Life as it's always been, is now, and ever will be. And, and life, life itself, the gift of life is spirit. It is the spirit of the infinite that dwells within us and adds embellishments to our soul. And spirit is consciousness. And consciousness is what we all share together. This morning, Reverend Don and Reverend Julie and I will bring you a, a light, a, a light that's, that's, that's looking a little bit more deeply into the meaning of Easter. We will draw on the, the historical origins of Easter, indeed, and that will be part of what we do. In fact, it's kind of interesting to note that for the first time in 33 years, we have faith traditions celebrating at the same time. Do you know what they are? Easter's easy. What's the other ones? Passover. Ramadan and Passover. yeah, and what was the other one? Passover. Passover. Passover was Wednesday this last week. So we have great faith traditions that are becoming aware of the power of life itself, indeed. So we will bring the science of mind teaching symbol as a guide to deepening the meaning of Easter, and this approach idea was first suggested by our own Reverend Don. He thought this would be a great way. I said, Well, why not? Let's do it. 
Now, before jumping into this deeper meaning of Easter, I'd like to just take a moment to thank all those who have made this service a meaningful celebration. First, Jim Nye. Thank you, Jim, for the latch hook rug. And we're using it today for our talk. <laughs> then Michelle Giamatteo and Donna Stevens, who have uh, 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 produced the yet-to-be-seen symbol, which will come out very soon. Thank you, guys. And also Michelle and Kathy Daniels, who have brought us something new for our celebration, and those are Easter eggs. I understand there's uh, both a, a saying and some candies in there, so there you go. We always give thanks for our musicians, Darcy and Brent, and for our practitioners, Cheryl. <laughs> yes. For our practitioner, Cheryl Ostrander, who led us in a lovely meditation this morning, and our practitioner, Cheryl Guess, who did, led our invocation and prayer, and our reader, Susie Onstott. Thank you so much. You see, <laughs> we're grateful. To, oh, we cannot forget Aaron. Thank you, Aaron, for being here so faithfully. Yay! <laughs> okay. Yay. And for the volunteers who prepared our hospitality, which I instituted understand included at least this morning, Greg and Susie, and our very own practitioner, Cheryl Ostrander. So thank you. Just, we are an amazing community. We work together in the spirit of love and understanding. Now, let's direct our attention to this teaching symbol for just a moment. Is anyone here totally unfamiliar with this symbol? Don't be afraid to raise your hand. Oh, OK. Well, good. <laughs> I, I like to have a reason to give some details. Because <laughs> everybody's familiar, we just gotta skip this part. Okay, well, you notice that the, the symbol itself is a circle, right? And the circle stands for oneness, that all of existence, all that is, everything, is part of the one, some part of the one. That's really vital to understand because there's all one power and one life and one love. Now, you notice that the symbol has some lines in it, right? And there's an upper third, a middle third, and a lower third. That upper third represents consciousness. It represents spirit. It represents the, actually the subject that I'll be talking a little bit more about. Uh, and then in the middle part, that represents, I might say, the creative medium or, or the law, or sometimes the word mind is used, subjective mind. And that is the, the uh, power of the infinite to produce and make the things real. And I understand Reverend Julie's going to take us into that area. And then the bottom third is, uh, I like what don't, Reverend Don says, it's kind of, it's us. It's this world. It's what we see. It's what's the result of the creative action of spirit that moves through its concepts, through the law into the body. Okay? Now, those, uh, uh, hopefully that gives us a, um, a, a bit of an introduction to the set the theme this morning. The upper area. Spirit. You ever feel close to spirit? You ever felt that warmth in your heart? That feeling, that awareness that there's a power and an energy and a, and a tender love that's close to you? Have you ever felt that, that you are supported? It is spirit itself that gives us the the ability to feel and to know that we are indeed some part of this infinite oneness. We sometimes say that spirit is uh, the source, the source of all, because spirit thinks into reality, thinks into its mind, thinks into the law, that which it wishes to manifest. As it does this, it, it is, it is, Working, if we, think, we think of it as an idea or a prototype in the mind of the infinite. And, and this infinite mind is consciousness itself. It's power and energy. It's all of those things. It's a principle. It's, it's, a, uh, it's energy. But it's also personalness. It's also that, that uh, warmth and color and, and uh, mm. love that exists. It's omniscient and omnipotent and omnipresent, all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere present. Now, here's an image that I found helpful uh, in my brief life here on this planet. I ask you to go in your imagination with me if you haven't done this yourself. Think of yourself standing on the shore 
of an ocean, a warm ocean, with waves just gently caressing your feet. As you raise your eyes, you see beyond, you see to the horizon. It looks infinite. There's no end to it. It's just all out there. As you look to the left, likewise. As you look to the right, likewise. You're part and witnessing something that reminds you of the infinite because it is so vast and yet powerful, right, right. It just seemed to go on forever. So that's life. That's an image for life itself. It's spirit. It just simply is. Now, our scientists tell us that all creation started with a big bang, an infinitesimally small little something or other. I don't know if anybody knows what was in there. <laughs> well, that exploded some 13.8, they say, billion years ago. And it continues to expand out into the universe and is still expanding. We see that in the redshift, for example. Now, some 1 point or 3.6 billion years ago, life emerged on our planet. Now, this is a scientific explanation for the origin of all things. Yet my question is, who put the point there? How did it get there? Where did it come from? Now, maybe scientists will find an answer for that, and maybe they won't. But I believe, with the great mystical traditions, that spirit put it there, that it was created out of the thought of the infinite mind of God. That's how it got there. Yeah. Spirit spoke its word, let there be light, and there was light. And it was good, as was all of creation, and still is good. Never been bad. Never, ever. So Easter's all about life, and Easter's all also very sacred. I want to say it. Easter is about life, and life itself is very, very sacred. Sacred not only because we, we receive life as a gift of spirit, but that the spirit is living in us and lives through us and lives as us. So it's very, very sacred. Life means so much to each of us and all of us, I think. If you would take a moment, just press your hand on your chest. Can you feel anything? The breath, maybe the heart. Maybe, you, you, maybe if you put your fingers right up here where your jugular vein is, can you feel that? Can you feel that? Go ahead, move your hand. Is there a pulse? Hopefully. <laughs> or, maybe, <laughs> or maybe you feel your wrist, right? Right. These are all signs of that loving flow of energy that flows through your body. <laughs> and, and really, you are the pulse of the universe. You are the life of the universe expressing. I like this little quote. I found it um, in doing some research for our little message this morning. And it says, this is from the Quran. And indeed, we, the divine, just like uh, uh, in, in uh, Genesis, we created, we have created man. And we know whatever thoughts his inner self develops. So it's personal, it's very interior. And we are closer to him than his juggler vein. <laughs> okay, God is really close. Spirit is here. Now, the, 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 probably the marvelous meaning of this whole Easter thing is that even when the heart no longer beats and the pulse is no more, we live on. You see, we're made of that one substance, that divine substance that exists forever, always has been, always is now, and always will be. Spirit itself. And in addition to that, we live in a network. We live in a network of living things, living things that, that, that are uh, essential to our being here on this earth. I, I thought this, you know, if there were no new crops, no new herds, vegetarian and meat lovers alike would disappear. They would. So Easter's all about life. Life is sacred. And life is conscious. And consciousness is the key to the way that we live. How we think, what we believe is what manifests in our life. We'll hear more about that. But you know, I, I was able to come across a, a, a reference that identified five basic levels of consciousness. And I, I, I'd like to just bring them to your attention. The first level is one you might not, not even think of as conscious. It's the mineral area. It's, it's the, 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 the natural, let's say, rocks and minerals and things. You might say, well, they're not conscious. Well, maybe they're not conscious in the sense that we think of consciousness, but they have enough integrity and enough 
built-in intelligence, if you will, to do what they do. If you take a metal sulfur, for example, and put it on water, it's going to skip on the water and it'll burst into flame. Every time. Something, something brought that about. Somehow when that big bang occurred, the, the laws of physics were in place. And those laws exist in that level. And the second level would be one that we probably could say maybe, maybe there's some consciousness in normal talk. But the plant life. Plants know to follow the sun. Have you ever seen that before? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Plants know how to take in uh, carbon dioxide and produce oxygen, right? They know lots of stuff, yeah. And how about animals? Animals are definitely there. I think with our pets particularly, we can see that there's, there's uh, uh, feelings and they're, they're, uh, 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 animals can hunt and they can form social groups. Yeah. And then we come to human consciousness. This is the fourth stage, human consciousness. We are conscious of ourselves as individuals, and we can cooperate with others. And then the, f the fifth level, cosmic consciousness. The individual becomes aware of the unity of all life so that they feel at one with everything. So to recap, we have mineral, plant, animal, human, and cosmic consciousness, the basic ladder of life, and each has its gradations. So when we rise up, when we rise up this morning in consciousness, we're rising up, getting closer to, and perhaps even experiencing that cosmic consciousness. Or we have the tool here to help us to get there. We do our spiritual mind treatment, for example, and it encompasses this first level beautifully. It starts with the divine, doesn't it? And Ernest Holmes tells us in the Science of Mind text, the mind of man, that could translate to the human mind, the mind of man, the human mind, is the mind of God in each of us. The human mind is conscious and directive. It is to mankind, to the individual, what God is to the universe. So the whole creative process of creating this universe is recapped in the life of each one of us. As each of us partake of the very same power, the very same process, and the very same beingness, because we're all part of the one. We express it so well. So let us let our thoughts rise up as we listen to Reverend Julie explain to us all about the law. Well, I don't know I'm going to explain all about the law. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this symbol, which I love, uh, it actually encapsulates the core of our teaching. And uh, it's both the microcosm and the macrocosm. And so as as a Reverend Moore talked about this infinite life and creation and, and how it works, how it works to, uh, and it works in the microcosm in us the same way because we are one with that. And so in our, our mind is part of that infinite mind. If we are one with that, then that makes total sense. We don't, we aren't all of God's mind but our mind is a partaker in that mind. So we have the use and the um, experience, should we choose of all of that. And so the middle part of the symbol symbolizes the way it works. And spirit, mind, the source of all life, and inspiration flows in us, as us. And this mind, our mind, um, uses it takes our thoughts, our, t our thoughts, our inspiration. We get inspiration from that um, part of that mind. You know, all that is in the universe is in that mind. And as we are in a place to partake of certain parts of it, this inspiration comes to us, or in our life's experience, we make choices. And so the way it works is, you know, we're a universe of laws. And, and I think we all understand that we're a universe of laws. And so this middle part represents that field or that medium uh, where thought waves, you know, our thoughts, our choices, our consciousness, as we more talked about, um, moves into this medium. It's all, it's all some kind of energy force. I mean, as time goes on, we'll have better language for it. But we can experience it. And as Holmes said, um, 
practice it. Don't take anyone's word for it. Prove it for yourself. So our take, our thoughts, our minds move through this medium of law. And the law is like a blind force. Uh, whatever is put into it returns to it in like kind. It doesn't make choices. It just returns to us what we put into it. And like all laws, it's impersonal. Uh, we can use it however we choose to use it. We can make mistakes, or we can do wonderful, creative, loving things. The law doesn't really care, as it doesn't care if we add 4 plus 4 and get 10. <laughs> it doesn't really care. It's not going to work for us, you know, uh, in math, but it's, the law doesn't care. It's very impersonal. And so this is kind of important for us. Um, you know, in, in, on Easter, you talk about uh, the raising up of a Savior as Jesus, uh, uh, the resurrection. But when we understand this nature of the universe, we realize that we don't need a savior because we are not actually lost. And we are a part of that whole and we cannot be separated. So we don't need something to heal a separation that does not exist. Our way of, of looking at Easter. So, and, and, and you know, speaking of Jesus, because really uh, in our culture, so much of the celebration of each Easter, well, most of the celebration of each Easter is around the resurrection of this man, Jesus. Whether it happened or didn't happen is uh, irrelevant. Um, he never called himself a savior. Those who came after were his followers, and those many, many years later who had a memory like the game of telephone um, <laughs> wrote things down. And that's not bad. That was their faith. It's not bad, and everyone has their own path, and I do honor that. But that's not where we are. Jesus never called himself that, but what he did, interestingly enough, if you read the Gospels, he taught the law. Over and over again he did. He said, it is done unto you as you believe. It is done unto you as you believe. You know, I'm always reminded of that story in, in Scripture of where he goes to this uh, man at Bethsaida. I think it's, that's the name of the pool. If I got it wrong, tell me about it. Um, <laughs> uh, but this guy, is he's crippled and he needs healing. And the way the story goes is the first one, when the wind moves the waves on the water, if you're the first one in the pond, you are healed. And because of his physical state, he never gets to there first. And years and years, he sits there, and Jesus walks up to him and says, why are you just sitting here? And he explains to him that he can't get up and move in the water, and he says, get up and walk. It's not about the wind moving waves on the water. That's a belief. And when you believe it, of course it is real. I, I really quite love that story. When we believe it, it is real for us. And so Jesus really taught a lot about the law when we read those stories. Um, so the law works for each one of us. It works for each one of us impersonally. The personal part is, as Reverend Moore talked about, that spirit that creates us and imbues us and is the personal experience of that divine love and all the aspects of what we recognize as the highest and best, the experience, the mystical experience. But in our day-to-day -day life here on planet Earth, it is how we think and how we believe because it is put into some law of mind. It just works that way, guys. You know it does. And it gives back to us. And so that is a, the middle part of our symbol. A spirit moves through the law, the divine, the macrocosm, the microcosm, which is us. It moves through. Our inspiration moves into the law and into our form of experience. And we've been done. Going to just take us to that third part. Yeah.
the you're body of our experience. Thank you, Judy. You're all getting this, right? You can just look out there and just see understanding and forming, forming your eyes. <laughs> oh, good. Did I ever tell you my favorite joke? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? No, uh, no, this, no, we've got to get cereal here. No. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, no, no, okay. So here we come to the, I call it the aspect, the third aspect. There's three aspects in there of the oneness of this beautiful uh, uh, creation by Jim. Thank you, you know. Um, it's the trinity of oneness. Uh, and it's a diagram, too, you see, in the Science of Mind textbook. I think Reverend Moore was going to mention that. Uh, there's, I don't know, was there seven or eight diagrams showing how you can get richly understand how this thing is working on all levels of life. So if you can dig up a Science of Mind textbook towards the end, look it up. It's, it's really worth looking at those symbols and how they've uh, we're, we're working, working through what we've been talking about here. Now, I'm supposed to only talk about five minutes here, so I'm going to run through a couple of things. Um, this thing is actually, I had written this down so I wouldn't forget it. It's, um, it's set up to illustrate, our, in our human mind, the spiritual concepts that we teach and use in our philosophy. It's that simple. It's set up to help explain that. It deepens, when we study it, it deepens our understanding for the faith that we've already got from all the other stuff that we've learned in this business. In this one power that Reverend Moore opened up with, the one source. Uh, and you know, that thing works like some metaphysics will describe as a, as a great mind thinking uh, all creation into existence. First comes the thought. And the vibration part, of course, speak the word, and, you know, all that good jargon we use here. But it's not just like a machine that we're manufacturing something new. It's, it's more fluid. It's more purposeful. And it's, it's transforming any randomness uh, and the appearance of chaos we see how the universe was, was, was born, so to speak. It, it, it brings it into divine purpose. And Reverend Moore started us on this path this morning after his welcoming and introduction. He spoke of the qualities of the first level of this, of this uh, threefold diagram. That top part contains the God part of the whole thing. And you know, some pretty smart, wise, yeah, more wise than smart, wise minds have drawn upon, I think, the divine impulse that's found in all human hearts and the human mind for wanting to better understand how creation really works. Science keeps working on that, don't we? Oh, I got a new finding, oh, got a new one, oh, got a new one. How Spirit God works all of this out for infinitely, infinitely creating. That's kind of what we're wanting for. So, Reverend Moore started with Genesis, basically, and uh, the source, the beginning, uh, what we call God or first cause, and then just leaping ahead, uh, where Reverend Julie addressed that middle part. She mentioned along the way the other things, but the law or the way is what uh, I was getting out of that. That's the pathway for creation. And something else, something else. In our philosophy, even though we respect, I like the way she brought this up, we respect this standard orthodox approach to Deister about the Savior, Jesus Christ, giving up his human life for eternal life and taking all of mankind's sins and renewing humans with this forgiveness and salvation from his act of his own sacrifice and thereby mankind having eternal life if we choose to follow that path. We respect that. But we also see something else. We really like to get into the deeper study about eternal. Easter, that's what we were talking about in the beginning here. In using this diagram, we have unified ourselves with the one source. We actually take ourselves and we identify with that. And we pronounce that we're not born in a sin that needs a separate savior, just like Julie mentioned. We don't come to really hold that as a belief because we're already made of the same God stuff that is all the ingredients of the universal creation to use. And because we 
you see, we, the way we can use this and why is because we self-acquired this self-awareness as a human long, long ago through the evolutionary process. One of, the, one of the laws that works through life unfolding, that natural order of unfolding consciousness, as Reverend Moore called this whole thing, and have been evolving, we've been evolving from this one source carrying that divine impulse of God to infinitely express God's self in form. And here in this bottom section itself, in the matter and the forms, we see how that swoop is put in there. It's that V, spirit, involving itself into form to experience that. Now, in... Uh, in the chapter on, oh gosh, the mystics, what the mystics taught, I need that book to read to you, but I can remember some of it. Ernest Holmes just kind of speaks to that. Um, he speaks to this idea of this, this involving into form, but also gaining everything needed to carry everything back to the Father, to carry everything back to the Source. That's we, why we part of the V one under. That's one understanding. Everything whoosh, forming, and then everything taking on and becoming. Like we're actually learning right now, aren't we? We're trying to become an understandable expression of God walking on this planet. We're one of the we're one of the better thoughts that God's ever had, that that mind has ever had. Hallelujah for that for me. So um, here's where it all comes. This is where at the bottom part, we all, this becomes a physical reality. It's, this is the experience for us, this bottom part we're going to be talking about. It's what we want to know about God expressing. Whether it's, it's just a simple blooming flower or a blossoming love affair, it's all here is where we humans get to be and do and embrace our creative God nature. Uh-huh that which we came with. That's our inheritance. Using our gifts of this power to choose. Thank you, Reverend Judy, for bringing that up. I love that idea. The power to choose, we think and therefore we are. And so changing thought changes lives and circumstances. We find that out. And one person's fears are another person's opportunities and vice versa. One person's fears and then the activating feelings of all, of both, are found in what we believe, what we've come to ha have a belief in, our thoughts. So, um, <laughs> this diagram has so much depth to it. We just, we, we can't cover it all in, in a session like this. But as Reverend Moore pointed out, and I'm pointing out that the Science of Mind textbook has this this way of really explaining, you know, we may do a, we may do a class on this someday. That, that could be a good class, I think. Now, we'd have to talk about that in the ministry part. But for now, uh, we have replaced an old symbol that we've been, we've been using for years, the big cross we used to set up out here, uh, which has the, had the remnants of duality and and uh, damnation and salvation and all of that hovering around it, really, the vibration. The cross, we used to place flowers on. Remember how we'd call up and we'd place these flowers on there for transforming this into something that we had a new idea about what it's all about, and we did use that. Now we will do something else. Reverend Moore is going to explain our next part of this Easter celebration using this symbol as an open-at-the-top experience. So I'm going to quit talking here. Just let's get started on something good. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Sure. Brent can't see it. <laughs> 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 All right.
Here we go. Hang <laughs> tight. Tell me when to do this, everyone. Oh, I, I, I've got to get my notes in order. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. All right. So let's uh, let's go ahead and reveal this symbol, this new symbol, if you'd like. And we can do that. All right. And, uh, yeah. Drum roll. Drum roll. Drum roll. Drum roll. Drum roll. Isn't that beautiful? All by itself. It, yeah, it has a, a beauty and an order and a harmony that, uh, again, Donna created and Michelle helped create. And it's uh, wonderful because it symbolizes that same energy, that same power, that same life that is inside of each one of us. And we use the same process. But what we're going to do is, is with these uh, use of flowers, I think flowers kind of represent the regenerating power of life. You've got the, the bud, and you've got the, the full flower, and then you usually have a seed. And it's, it's a continuation of life. It's bringing to life this symbol in our own hearts and minds. I think that's what we're all about this morning by using this little ritual of regeneration. So we'll decorate this teaching symbol with the flowers so each of us can really realize what we're uh, uh, doing in terms of attaining that consciousness and that awareness of that presence and that love and that power that is divine itself. Now we've added a new element to our celebration this morning. You may have seen them, the Easter eggs. Let's see, there should be one right here somewhere. Where did it go? Got an Easter egg. Where did, where did my golden egg go? Uh-oh. Oh. Somebody took that one already? Uh-oh. Well, no, son no, of a gun. I'll tell you I think <laughs> it must have hatched. That's what it did. In any case, uh, the egg itself is uh, kind of a symbol. It's, it's been symbolic in many, many different cultures over the years. It's kind of a visual shorthand for new life and unhatched potential, for the ability to crack, an crack open to something new and wonderful. And in many cultures around the world, it's, it's, it's seen actually in stories of creation as the genesis of the gods and of earth and of life. So we're going to use two symbols. Come up and put flowers here. Our, I invite uh, Kathy and Donna up to help distribute the flowers at this time. And then um, Cheryl, are you going to help with the, with the eggs? And so we can just come up um, as you are and get a flower. And I think we have some music that's we going do. to be playing. So our practitioners now invite you to come forward. Kathy will dismiss you. I 
see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. The Spirit and I
words. The Spirit and I are one. The Spirit. joyful <laughs> so much fun joyful, celebrate joyful. celebrate life itself celebrate the renewing power of life celebrate the beauty of life celebrate the wonder of life as it appears in every person here this is great yeah. so we've had this chance to express life and give of uh, this wonderful gift of beauty now we have the opportunity to share our financial gifts with our uh, celebration with our community here and we, we know that that as we give we receive that the universe is as uh, Reverend Julie said, it, it mirrors back to us. It, what we give out comes back to us. Yeah, yeah. So let's turn into our program, and we have a little blessing for our offering. And I would invite, I think it's Shannon. Pardon, we have a song now? Do we have a song first? We do. We do. <laughs> but I'll do it in any order you want, whatever okay. you want. Well, let's, let's go ahead with the song and okay. just get ready for that gift, OK? All right. Do you want us to sing? <laughs> Spirit is risen, Spirit is risen. Wherever there's a ray of sunlight bursting in the morning or the eventide, wherever shadowed silhouettes are cast against the ocean or the mountainside, spirit to rise morning or noon time a now or a soon time for spirit to rise spirit is risen spirit is risen wherever colors blend and break and turn upon the panorama of the sea sounds of sound move through the magic waves of atmosphere above the scene then in the scene and hearing and feeling spirit rises up purpose and being releasing the soul spirit rises up spirit is risen Spirit is risen If day becomes a radiant hope Revealing more than self To be a treasured find If life anew springs up in nature Or is known within the fold of humankind Here where the touch of a hand means so much Spirit rises Reaches out to the whole spirit rises here. Spirit is risen. Spirit is risen. See with more than eyes the things that are done. Hear with more than ears the things that are said. Search out the meaning and break to being, experience the freeing and the infinite feeling of spirit is risen, spirit is risen, spirit is risen, spirit is risen.
is indeed risen in and through each one of us. And that's the purpose, the meaning, and the real depth that we've tried to be explore this morning through our explanation with our teaching symbol. So let's go ahead with the gift idea and just let that spirit of giving rise up inside your heart and uh, we'll invite our two uh, persons of the gym <laughs> and I believe Shannon to come up and we will do the offering. So let's then turn to our program and read this blessing. You know where it is. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am all that I have, and all that I circulate. And so it is. I am so blessed. 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 are moved this morning by the power and the energy that is spirit itself. This spirit is a gift. It's a gift of life itself. It's that which circulates through us, in us, and as us. It is the end of all being, the beginning of all being, the internal presence of all being. And we celebrate it with our gifts this morning, our gifts of gratitude for being part of this marvelous experience that we call life, divine life, divine love. We just give thanks for it all. And as we know this in our hearts, let us say together, and so it is. You'll notice in your program, there is a prayer of protection. If you'd like to stand at this point, I will do that. Let's recite it together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God protects us. The light of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. We're using a different closing song today, one that expresses how spirit uses us. Darcy and Brett, are you ready? Lord, prepare to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, pride and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for
I got you.